The logistics of it all was, you know, was very difficult. Quite honestly, and I told him this many times, I never thought that he'd be able to do it. He's a pretty boring CPA. I mean, Steve, I'm sorry, but you know, you're not, you're not a really exciting guy, except when he starts talking about kids. Steve's vision for Boys and Girls Club meant hope for the community. The fact that only kids can be members of the Boys and Girls Club was really, you know, a centering idea that Steve would use to all of us uh, consistently and it, it really worked. It worked for me. And that was always our big challenge. Steve would say, you have to be a kid to get in here, but we have to get the parents on board as well. Steve and I had four children that were all very busy and he was coaching and we were running to activities and we always had conversations about the children that didn't have those opportunities. So he worked with a group from the town of Walk Hill, the officials from the town of Walk Hill, the Walk Hill East Rotary, a lot of friends got together and started to work on a youth program that would expand opportunities for children in the town of Walk Hill. Trying to organize something like that is not easy. You know, where do you start? Um, you know, you're gonna need funds, you need materials, you need people to help out, you need a location. So there was a lot of things that we had to deal with as far as trying to get the club going. Then we were fortunate enough through school with our children, we met a family named the Skeins. I was invited to come play basketball with some guys that I didn't even really know and, and I showed up on a court and there was a few people up, to, up playing and I, I went into the game and that's how I met Steve. He was one of the players and, and during uh, the games we, we, we got to know each other in, in, in breaks and we talked about various things, things that um, you know, he did and what I did and, and somehow we came around to talking about Boys and Girls Clubs because I worked with Boys and Girls Clubs of America and that's where I really told him the steps that needed to be taken to become a club. So I would probably, as many nonprofit executive directors would, would do, I would cite financial challenges as, uh, you know, the biggest uphill battle we faced. And it didn't matter what those challenges were. We faced them head on. We found ways creatively and together to, to get through them. And Steve was always there to be encouraging, to be positive, to remind us it's for the kids, it's about the kids. And he would just always say, we're going to find a way to do this. Steve did take a leadership role. Uh, he was very involved in forming the club and being a leader in everything that had to be done. And most particularly, he's a good man. Caring, you know, individual, um, helpful, honest, bright. You just can't describe him with one word. We have no building. We have no formal programming. And we have no money. But we really would like you to accept the position as the first executive director for the Town of Walkill Boys and Girls Club. So how, how can you not accept a, an offer like that? Especially when it comes from someone like Steve Plain, who has always had the ability to bring you along with his, with his vision. You know, he, he uh, you know, put the, the goal out there, the vision, the, uh, the hope, and you couldn't help but be inspired by it. Steve, um, I will always describe as being like the Miyagi. So Steve knew how people worked in a really interesting way. Um, he knew how to get the best out of everybody without making you feel like he was pulling it out of you. Um, and Steve also had this really unique perspective too. He'd love to see a discussion play out. How can we best achieve this goal? How can we best serve this population of kids? And he'd let everybody get all of their ideas out. And then when you just thought you found consensus, He'd say, but what about this? And it would totally change the direction of everything that we were doing. And I have goosebumps as I'm telling you this because it was just, it happened to me a lot in my, <laughs> in my career. But truly great people allow things to evolve organically over time and develop to be something far greater than what they could have ever imagined. Steve Plain is the type of person who just gives a lot of himself and his time to his local community. He puts others before himself and always has time to volunteer, whether it's for the Salvation Army or the Walk Hill East Rotary or his other local community service organizations. He's always willing to give of his time, talent, and treasure. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve.
Thanks, Mr. Welcome Steve. Back. Thanks, Mr. Steve. Thanks, Steve. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to have fun at this camp. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Mr. Steve. Thanks, Mr. Steve. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Thanks, Mr. Plain. Thanks, Mr. Steve. Thanks, Mr. Steve. Thanks, Mr. Steve. Thanks for serving us a great time, Mr. Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Steve. Thanks, Mr. Plain. Steve, take a break. Um, if I had anything I could say to Steve, it would be thank you. Thanks, Steve, for being the person that you are and having the belief and the mission of Boys and Girls Clubs. So if I could say anything, I want to say thank you to Steve, and I mean that. Thank you, one, for myself, for the way that the Boys and Girls Clubs changed my life. You know, certainly my career, but my life. It changed who I am, it changed my future. Um, and that, you know, that's important. But also thank you on behalf of all these kids in Orange and Sullivan County and beyond. So many have gone through the after-school programs, through the summer camp, uh, touched one way or another by, by the programs. And these are kids that, that needed it the most. Steve, thank you for everything that you've done for our community. Thank you for planting the seed to the tree, knowing that one day you would not even benefit from its shade, the true vision that you've delivered to us and for all. Thank you to your family's commitment to this program, which kept it going through its toughest times. And now it has its own inertia because of you that it'll live for far, far longer and hopefully forever. Thank you. I think I would tell Steve thank you. I grew up in this Boys and Girls Club as much as anybody else did. But what I'll tell you that I find to be interesting, and as I was driving up here, I was thinking about all the staff that I worked with, and I was thinking of, they're now teachers. They are now guidance counselors, they're law enforcement officials, they've gone on to careers in marketing and in business, and they learned it all here. So as much as those kids grew up in a Boys and Girls Club, we all did too, and what a great experience to have. He knows how proud I am, he knows how much I love him, and he knows that he, in his very quiet, unassuming way, has changed so many lives. And that's a wonderful legacy, but it was also a great opportunity. You know, he really gets so much joy from knowing that the club exists and so many children every day get to be happier and safer and healthier and, and find the joy in serving others. That's just great stuff. Nothing other than our own children, I'm sure, warm his heart the way this does. Just to have been a part of this for so long, he feels like it's his gift, not the gift he gave the gift that we both get to receive.